This problem asks us to consider a rescue mission the Coast Guard is performing in order to save or rescue a stranded boat somewhere west of the Farallon Islands. What's interesting about this problem is that it's the type of problem where an object is being released from the apex and then falling down towards the ground or free falling towards the ground. So the initial velocity of this package will be horizontal, no vertical component of the velocity, and then it will just free fall to the ground below. So, uh, trying to visualize the problem, here's a little airplane, and then if the plane wasn't moving, the package would just drop and free fall straight down, uh, covering greater and greater distances in equal times. But this plane is moving, so the resulting motion is that once the package is dropped, it travels horizontally and vertically at the same time. And the consequence is, you can see visually here, you get some really cool kind of parabolic back motion. So what we're trying to do in this problem is figure out a few things, like um, what is the time it takes the ball to free fall to the ground? And then in that time, how far did it travel horizontally? What's the range of the ball? And then ultimately, uh, our job is to figure out where should the plane drop the package such that it can land on the deck of the boat. So I'm going to start just by writing out the initial conditions. The package starts 125 meters high. The boat is at the zero meter level. And the initial velocity in the vertical dimension or the y dimension of the package is zero because the plane is flying horizontally. And just as the package strikes the boat, we're not sure how fast it's traveling downward. The acceleration in the vertical dimension is what we've been studying. The free fall, g acceleration, downward, negative 9.8 meters per second each second. And then the time it takes is unknown. So uh, looking at these conditions, I'm recognizing that um, the two things I don't know are the final y component of the velocity and the time. So being interested in the time, I'm going to look at my list of kinematics equations. And, um, oh yeah, I'm going to choose that big dog displacement equation. Let's see that. Let's write that now. Y equals y naught plus v naught y t plus one half g t squared. I'm, I'm keeping the subscripts um, that sub y thing there in my formulaic expression so I can remember that there's two different values of velocity as we're working in two dimensions so I have to separate out the x components and the y components or the horizontal and the vertical parts so now um, looking at the initial conditions I can see that this vertical velocity is initially zero and anything times uh, zero, like zero times t, that's, the whole term is going to be zero. And then this part, the ending position, is also zero. And that allows me to simplify the algebra. So an efficient way to work with the algebra is just to eliminate the terms that are zero. So that becomes zero equals y naught plus one-half gt squared. And I know all of these quantities except for t, so algebraically I'm going to solve for t simply by subtracting y naught from both sides. And I'm going to multiply 2 on each side. And now I'm going to divide by g. And then take the square root of both sides. So I'll end up with an expression that looks like square root of negative 2 y naught divided by g. Now initially I think to myself I'm worried about this negative sign inside the radical but then I recall that the <clears throat> value of the acceleration g is also negative so these two negatives will cancel out and leave me a positive under the radical. I'm also concerned with which one of the roots I'm going to take and since I'm Working in real time, I'll take the positive root, not worry about going backwards in time. 
plugging in um, 125 meters for y naught and negative 9.81 for g, calculate a time of 5.05 seconds. I round that value to three significant figures because my initial conditions are in three significant figures. And then just make a note here that this is the free fall time. That's the time it took the package to fall towards the deck of the boat. Now, this is really the time it took. Another way to look at this, if the ball was to start just from rest 125 meters high and fall straight down, it would take 5.05 seconds. Now, in this problem, of course, the ball's traveling sideways as well as vertically. So, how far do they travel sideways? What's the range of the ball? Let's make another list of initial conditions. X naught, zero meters. X, I don't know. That's what I'm looking for. V naught X. This problem is um, 86 meters per second. The package is inside the airplane. The whole thing's traveling 86 meters per second sideways. And because there's no acceleration in the horizontal dimension in free fall, the beginning and ending horizontal velocities are the same. And then, now that I'm working in this dimension, I already know the time. So that's 5.05 seconds. I got that from the last problem. So if I look at this list of initial conditions, this is the only thing I don't know, the range. So I can use a, vari a variety of uh, kinematics equations. And the one I'm going to choose is the x naught plus v average x times t. Now what's nice about this is the average velocity in the horizontal dimension dimension is just the 86 meters per second. The beginning velocity, the ending velocity, and the average velocity are all the same. So I can set this term equal to zero, and I can write this now as x equals just vx times t. Using 86 meters per second and 5.05 seconds, I can calculate the final range of the package to be somewhere around 434 meters. So when I drop the package out of the airplane, it travels downward and rightward for 5.05 seconds, and it travels horizontally 434 meters, while it traveled vertically downward 125 meters. So the, the um, horizontal displacements referred to as the range, and Part C is asking us to sketch a diagram describing where the plane should be when the package is released, such that the package lands right on the boat's deck. So this is what I'm thinking. Uh, if this is the airplane, this is the airplane, and somewhere below is the water level below someplace. Um, if I put the boat right down here, right below the airplane, just imagine that's the boat, and you drop the package, will it land in the boat? Well, of course not. The, the package doesn't just fall straight down. It is moving to the right. So the package is going to do this, this, and this this, or maybe in a better diagram, it, this package is going to do uh, this, this, this. So this is where I should put the boat in order for the package to hit the boat. So this position here must have been x naught zero meters. That's where the package was released, and the package travels this way, some displacement, until it reaches the boat, where x equals 464 meters. So what I'm trying to communicate with this diagram is, if you want the package to strike on the deck of the boat, you better have the airplane release the package 434 meters before it gets to the boat.